Today's show is going to be a workshop and you can get the free printable from my resource area for my email list at calledoutliving.com forward slash freebies. Hi, I'm Chi from Called Out Living. Called Out Living is all about goal setting, habits, mindset, basically deciding how you want your life to be and then living it. So today I'm going to be talking about goal setting. So how to set goals for 2020 that work. So I'm sure you've set goals before. Um, I love setting goals. And sometimes they, you know, you do it and sometimes you don't. Could be a bit hit and miss. So I just want to share some tips that are going to help you make goals that work, that you can actually achieve. So I think the first thing when you're setting goals for 2020 is to actually think about your life and how you'd like it to be. So have you got a vision for your life? Have you got this idea of what you'd like your life to look like? So I would say it starts with a dream. So have you got this dream for your life? So have a little think about that, like how you'd like you, you know, when you're an older person, you're looking back, you're 80 years old, looking back at your life. What, is, what are some of the things you'd like to have done? What are the things you'd like to achieve? Who would you like to be? What who, What's this person you'd like to become? So start with thinking about the end and just get that sort of sense of like, okay, this is what I'd love to see happen in my life. So... After looking at what you'd like from your life, then I think it's a really great idea to review. So we're setting goals for 2020. So let's look at 2019. We're still in 2019 as I record this. So let's look, how has your 2019 been? So you can get the download. I've got a little workbook you can download from bit.ly forward slash set goals 20 call and call is C-O-L. So you can get that workbook, print it out, or if you want, you can work from my life planner and that's bit.ly forward slash life planner 19. So I'll just pick them up because I'll be, oh, I'll be talking through them. So this is the life planner and this is where I'll be reading the um, prompts from. And this was like another version of it, which is where I've been working on my goals for 2019. So my 2019 planning has been in here. So I might also refer to this as well. So let's look at how your 2019 went. So I think reviewing is really great because you can just see like what was really, you know, what was good, what did you enjoy, what worked. You can look at the challenges, the lessons learned. There's always lessons learned. And then you can use that to make better goals for 2020. So I'm going to uh, go through the questions and you can just pause it, write your answers and then press play and carry on. So it's actually a workshop, it's interactive. So won't just don't just listen to me talking, you know, get your notebook, get the workbook, get your life planner, sit down, put some music on, you know, get your favorite drink, snuggle on the sofa or your favorite place and let's have this like amazing workshop. So, here we go. So annual review. What felt most aligned to my values? So what things did you do in the year that felt really aligned with your values? What's important to you? For instance, if your value is family time. So what is it? What did you make happen that really made family time come to life, made family time a focus? So maybe you made a big change in your work. You got some flexible work in. So you were home for dinner every day. And that was that just made family quality time make you know made it happen for you or we've got another value but what what in 2019 felt most aligned to your values where do I feel I compromised my values so obviously life isn't perfect we can't always have everything the way we'd like and it takes time to work it towards a better situation but what happened last year, or well, this year, 2019, where well, you just felt like I'm compromising my values. I'm not living in alignment with my highest values that I say that are important to me. Because if you're not, you're going to find that you're going to have that sense of frustration in life. Okay. In what ways will I change the next year? So, you know, what things would you like to change? Are the habits, are the beliefs, mindsets that you want to change? Are there the situations that happen that you would like to see change next year? How have my values evolved? Because the thing is, we don't stay the same. We grow, our life situations change. So it's silly to expect that your values from when you're 18 are going to be the same values when you're 28, 38, 48. 
So look at that. Just, you know, think about who you're now becoming and how your life is now and think about your values. Do they need to change? Have they evolved? In 2019, what was your biggest challenge? I know we all had them. <laughs> and how did it help you? So each challenge brings lessons and lessons aren't always fun, but lessons are necessary. And I always think about like my hardest, toughest situations I've been in life and they've been stepping stones to better future. They've propelled me forward. They've grown my character, um, developed as like who I am, my confidence in knowing what I want from my life. So how did your biggest challenge help you? What am I grateful for? Obviously, gratitude is really important. Um, we often take for granted all the amazing things that we have. And it's easy to always compare to others and think that you're lacking, think you're behind and not see what you've got, not to be grateful for what you have. So what are you grateful for? And in 2019, how do you want to feel? So I think feeling is quite an important one because most of the time we set goals and it really comes back down to how we want to feel, but it's not always obvious. So you might have a money goal and really the feeling you want is to feel secure. You might have a goal to lose weight and your um, the feeling you really want is to feel confident or to feel loved or to feel lovable. So um, that's why I think it's a great question to consider how do you want to feel. And like talking about feelings, I caught, I also wrap that up in the uh, word intentions because like, to me it's slightly different from goals because like goals it's a very definite thing while intentions it's a bit more airy fairy it's a bit fluffy it's more like about feelings and i'll be talking about intentions in a couple of minutes yeah so the next thing to do is look at your life now so a life audit some people call it life wheel or level 10 life and it's basically looking at 10 areas of your life and seeing how you feel you're doing in each of them so you're going to rate each area from one to ten one being not very happy, uh, don't feel you're doing very well in that area, and 10 being you're very satisfied, you're very happy with how things are going. So I'm just going to read them from my old planner. So the 10 areas that I have are business, work, and that could be business, work, or study, or vocation, if you volunteer. Fat, I've got family, then I've got marriage, that could be love, relationship. Then I've got finances, I've got church, but that could be community. Um, I've got God, but that could be spirituality, your faith. It could be something else like social justice, or that could be about nourishing your, your well-being, your mental health, your emotional health. So you could, you know, call it whatever you'd like. I've got home, so that could also be your environment where you live, your town or city, as well as your actual home your room, maybe it's cluttered and it's stressing you out. Friends, then I've got health, and then also fun, so hobbies. So for each of those areas, look at how you feel like you're doing now, how you feel like you, the year has been in each of those areas, and then rate them from one to 10. And you can have a graph or you can use a like circle chart and colour it in and then it's sort of like an easy way to just look and see and then use it each month. That's included in my, you'll find that in a, in my life planners. So if you have it, you'll have it in the beginning. Oops, just finding it. Life wheel. And if you've got one of the newer ones that's coming out, it's gonna be a graph rather than a wheel. Okay, so you've looked at how you would like your life to look um, over your whole lifetime. You've looked at 2019, had a quick review of that. Of course, you can go into more depth. You can think of more questions. We've done a review of your life and how you feel you're doing in 10 areas of your life now. The next thing I think is really helpful is to come up with a word for the year. Now I have got another video about word for the year and you can see that there'll be a link to that other video. Again, I've got it in this planner. It has a word for the year and then it also has a place to put your intentions. And by intentions again, it's like, it's more about sort of feelings and sort of who you wanna be. It's 
hot, you can't really, it's a bit more uh, airy fairy, it's not very solid, but it's more about be, who you want to be and who, who would, how would you like to feel. So anyway, word for the year, I think it's a great thing to help you with setting your goals for 2020, because this is a word that just wraps up and summarises how you want to feel, who you want to be, what you'd like to do in the following year. And whenever you, I like for me, it, it sort of acts as a compass. So this last year, my word was nurture. So every now and then if I'm feeling a bit frustrated or stuck or things are not quite going well, I'll remind myself, okay, your word was nurture. Are you doing, are you nurturing yourself in these areas that you set for yourself? And oftentimes I'd feel like, find that I wasn't. So then I'd focus in on that again. So that word was a compass. It just helped guide me through the year. Nurture, am I doing that? No, okay, <laughs> let's get back on track. So the word just wraps up sort of how you want to feel, um, who you want to be, what you'd like to do for the year. So for me, my word for the year, I'm going to actually have two because you can do what you like because at the end of the day, it's your life and you make things work. Um, I was going to have just one and my word was going to be consistency and then I decided I was going to have two. So one is consistency and one is truth. Um, so pick a word for the year, check out the other video. There's also a printable around that you can find in my resource area if you sign up at calledoutliving.com forward slash freebies and you can find all my free printables in there. So next we're going to look at intentions. So I've mentioned how intentions are sort of a bit more f a sort of fluffy concept. It's not like um, not like goal like I want to uh, lose five kg. It's all a, it's a bit more about how you want to feel and who you want to be. So I've got this twenty prompts for journaling for your intentions, and I just find that intentions help you to I don't kind of look past just goals and achieving or getting but really about who you are and I think that's really the biggest journey in life is for us to grow I don't think the journey of life is about just getting things and just reaching goals and then getting to the next goal and making new goals it's really about who you are and who you're who you're becoming and how you grow and develop um, I really think that humans are designed to want to grow and to want to be better and want to improve so I will just read these prompts and again, you can just pause it and you can fill out the prompt and then carry on. So in 2020, and I've titled it, who am I becoming? So in 2020, I will be, I will feel, I will become, I will choose, I will let go of, I will show up by, I will face these fears. I will make space for. I will welcome. I will do less. I will invest in. I will develop. I will acquire. I will learn. I will save. I will teach. I will travel. I will meet. I will develop these friendships and I will share. So 20 prompts that just really how to help you think about who you are becoming in 2020. So you can just you can find those in my Etsy shop. And again, the link is bit.ly forward slash life intentions 20. And I just find that really helps kind of open up your ideas and your thoughts, especially before you set the goals. It's about thinking who, about who you want to become and then the goals should come out of that. So the next thing is to think about what would you like your life to look like in 2020? December 31st, 2020 comes and you look back at your life. What would you have liked to have seen happen? How would you like to have grown? What would you like to have and be and do? And I just think it's so important we start with looking at the looking at the end and then we work our way backwards. So have a think about it. And as you look and think about what you would like your life to look like in 2020, I want you to have this idea or this keep in mind this idea of not limiting yourself and not constraining yourself, of basically dreaming really big and imagining that you have 
the resource, you have the skills, you have the time to make it happen. So not just making like these very, very, very small goals that don't stretch you at all, but there has to be a bit of stretch in there. But imagine that the, there's no constraints, there's no limits, and just think about that and help that to kind of just open up your mind to the possibilities of what you could actually achieve in 2020. In 365 days. <laughs> One item a day, 365 items towards making your goals happen. So you can definitely make some massive state changes and make some massive progress in that. Once you've thought about that, then you're going to work your way back. You're going to reverse engineer that outcome. So you're looking at what you'd like to have happened. Looking at you're in December and you're looking back at the year, and this is how how life looks in December 2020. Okay, how did you get there? So now you've got to work backwards to figure out the steps that will get you to that point. You're going to brainstorm them. You've got your workbook. You can look at that. You've got your brainstorm section. So you're going to brainstorm all the things. All the um, any thoughts that come to mind, any actions you think, any steps you think will be part of that. Uh, people you might need to um, bring into your life to help you with that. Habits you might need to develop. Skills you might need to acquire. Why it's important. Just write it all down into your brainstorm. And now you've looked at your what you'd like to, to happen in 2020. You've reverse engineered it. You've figured out so the main steps to what to get there. And you've worked backwards. You've done a big brainstorm. You've got loads of ideas about the steps needed and what you might need to change and people that you need to meet or hire, get their help, coach you, mentor you, habits you need. Now you're going to make those into goals. So if you can think about what bigger goal could you make that encapsulates most of what you'd like to see happen my goal is to reduce the symptoms uh, my autoimmune symptoms so that's a health one and for me that encapsulates so many things because that encapsulates my uh, my body like movement that encapsulates food and diet changes that encapsulates um, my mental health and taking care of that that also encapsulates my faith and spirituality because for me like making sure I'm praying and do my devotional that actually helps me you know with how I feel which is helps me with um, managing my autoimmune symptoms and feeling better and also I actually believe in healing as well so so that goal encapsulates so many different areas of my life that includes habits that I would like to bring into my life in 2020 so that that goal is like an umbrella goal for a lot of other goals rather than setting myself 10 goals and one goal is I want to drink a smoothie every day I want to have a quiet time every day I want to do pilates every day so rather than have like five goals that are like that I have that one bigger umbrella goal and they come underneath it so I hope that helps get this idea of this one bigger goal that has a lot of things underneath it so when you do that then you only really need to set I said three about two two or three goals and then a lot of those things come under it and it pretty much